What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 17.2 beta 2 to register developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, Apple also dropped the second beta for iPadOS 17.2, watchOS 10.2, macOS Sonoma 14.2, tvOS 17.2, and HomePod version 17.2. But of course we're talking all about iOS in this video. So you can see coming from beta 1, this update came in at just under 750 megabytes on my iPhone 15 Pro Max, a little bit smaller than I was expecting. So let's go ahead and check out the new build number for this second beta. And we can see here it is 21C5040G. So we do still have a G at the end of the build number, which indicates we are still a ways away from the final release. We probably have at least two to three more betas to go before that final release. Now, if we go back and check out the modem firmware down here, the modem firmware has been updated as well, very slightly. It's now 1.22.02-1. So a minor update there to the modem. So you might see small improvements to cell connectivity. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 17.2 beta two? And the first thing is a big new feature for the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. And if we head into to our settings and go down to the camera. So we're gonna to go to camera right here and then to formats, you will notice that we have a brand new section here called video capture spatial video for Apple Vision Pro. So right under that toggle, it says record spatial video with remarkable depth for viewing in the photos app on the Apple Vision Pro. For best results, keep iPhone in landscape orientation and stable while recording. And it does say that it's recorded at 30 FPS at 1080p only. And it does also say that a minute of video will be approximately 130 megabytes. So that is awesome. And now that we have that enabled, if we go into the camera application, you will see down in the bottom left-hand corner, we now have a Vision Pro glyph icon with a cross through it but if we tap on that and turn it on you can see it automatically kind of puts our device in landscape mode so it says move further away so you do have to be a little bit further back because again the whole point of spatial video recording is to watch it in 3d with the vision pro headset so if you start recording obviously you have to be further back so you can get more of the environment around you so you can watch it in 3d and turn your you know whole body and turn your head so you can see the world around you so i'm very curious to see how this actually looks and you can see when you actually start recording we get the glyph icon right there next to the recording timer now, once you finish that video and you go into it, you will see that we do have a spatial icon right here. It, you know, specifies this as spatial up in the top left-hand corner. And if you swipe up on that video, you can see the metadata right there. It doesn't actually say that this is a spatial video anywhere in the metadata. It just shows it as an HEVC file right there. And it plays as normal. Like if you play the video back after you record it, everything looks like a normal video. And that's what's pretty interesting and what I'm really looking forward to seeing because there's no way of actually viewing this video in that spatial mode where it's like 3D. So this is cool. Obviously it's, you know, here way in advance of the Vision Pro headset, but it's good to start seeing, you know, little clues of that headset in the software. And by the way, if you go into the photos app and go to the albums section, you can see that we do have an album for space right here so if you go into that you can see the different spatial videos that you've recorded we also have a minor change inside of our settings so if we go back into our settings and then go all the way up to general now we have a section for coverage so we've always had a section for this but it was under about so before you had to go into settings general about and then you would see coverage in here but now it's on the outside it's right once you go in to general that is where you have coverage and where you can see the coverage for your different Apple devices there's also also some new features added to Siri with this update. So you can now ask Siri to tell you your altitude and you can also have Siri tell you your ETA when using Apple Maps for directions. The journal application was just released with iOS 17.2 beta one. And I'm assuming that we're gonna get improvements with pretty much every single beta, but we have a noticeable change here in beta two in regards to suggestions. So if you go to add a new journal entry and then you tap on the pencil in the bottom left to get some recommendations recommendations on what to write about, you can see that they populate 
right away. And I do really love the recent tab right here as well, because sometimes these recommendations are just not the best. But if you go to recent, it shows things that you've done in a certain day. Of course, you have to grant access for your device to be able to, you know, see what you do and you can change that in settings, but you can see it does break it down by day and who you talk to that day, what you listen to that day, just to kind of give you some ideas for what you might want to write about. Apple has also expanded on the sensitive content warning feature. So if you go into your settings and go to privacy and security, and then down here we have sensitive content warning if you go into that this has now been expanded to stickers and contact posters so now you will be you know notified you'll be kind of warned when there is the potential of a nude photo or nudity in stickers in the messages application or in contact posters in the contacts app or when somebody is calling you there's also code in beta 2 that indicates apple's proximity sign-in feature is coming with this update and if we head into the music application i noticed a change with playlists and editing the album artwork so as you guys know in 17.2 we now have these you know generated album covers or playlist covers for when you want to edit the album artwork and before in beta one these would not save so like if i went over to one of these ones right here and i tapped on done this would not save to the new cover that i chose but now in beta 2 they work as intended i did also notice that widgets are fixed in beta 2 so in beta 1 i had a lot of issues and a lot of you guys also had issues with widgets just showing up as blank especially after rebooting i feel like that's a you know a constant bug we've had for a couple of years now but they have improved here with beta 2 i noticed that these are not blank after a reboot and i've not seen any of them blank since i updated to beta 2. oh and also the weather bug appears to be bugged out here in beta 2 so i'm not really sure what's going on here with my weather widget right here so you can see it does take me to the weather app and everything shows up just fine but when i go into the lock screen widget it just says weather unavailable so according to other people the snow bug that was fixed in 17.1.1 is also fixed here in 17.2 beta 2 but as you can see really the only bug i'm having here with this update is where it says weather unavailable for that specific widget now if we take a look at the release notes for beta 2 we do have something here under airdrop so we do have a known issue that says sending an airdrop or using name drop to an ios 17 or 17.1 device might fail sporadically so if you're having issues with airdrop you know airdropping a friend who may be not on the betas that could be why and apple is aware of it and they are working on a fix so hopefully that gets fixed very soon and then we do also have some known issues for apple music related to favorite songs playlists and then we do also have some resolved issues under the journal application so you can see we have three bug fixes here one of them is what i mentioned earlier where journaling suggestions might not get populated so that is also mentioned in the release notes. We also have a fix for users might see duplicate journaling suggestions along with a fix for setting a schedule for notifications will cause journaling suggestions notifications to not trigger. And then we do also have a fix for personal hotspots. If you had an issue with old Android devices connecting to your iPhone hotspot that appears to be fixed as well. So now let's talk about the performance and the battery life with beta two, because beta one was overall pretty positive in terms of performance and battery life. Most of you guys didn't really have any issues. The issues I did here were related to widgets, which again, those appear to be fixed here in beta two. I also heard a lot of issues with journaling suggestions again, fixed here in beta two. And also a lot of people mentioned how their phone would overheat, but I feel like I hear that with every single beta, but nonetheless, my device does feel just fine i never really had overheating issues so you'll kind of have to update and let me know if that's fixed for you but so far beta 2 does seem to be more stable than beta 1 so i'm going to run a quick geekbench test here to see how it compares to beta 1 in terms of the geekbench score all right so we scored a 2902 on the single core and a 7176 on the multi-core so let's see how that compares to beta 1 so it looks like slightly lower on both the single core and the multi-core but again just take these with a grain of salt because it's not really indicative of real world usage and your results might vary and then same goes with the battery life i will give you guys an update on the battery life and how that's performing because i am using this on my main device so i will let you guys know in my apple weekly episode on saturday how the battery life is compared to beta 1 and also compared to 17.1 aka 17.1.1 and then finally let's talk about what to expect next from apple so next week i would expect to see ios 17.2 beta 3 so i do think we're going to 
to switch back to a weekly release schedule, at least for the next beta. So we are getting this update on a Thursday, which is a little bit unusual. Apple does not usually release betas on a Thursday, but keep in mind, we did get 17.1.1 this week along with new Macs. So this week was not your ordinary week. So with that being said, I would still expect to see beta three for 17.2 next week. Now we could see it on Thursday as well, just to keep that seven days up. But it seems more likely that we're going to see it on the 14th or the 15th, which is Apple's usual time frame of the week to release betas. Now, after beta three, we could either see a beta four on the next week, the week of the 20th, or we could skip a week and go to the week of the 27th for the next release. But regardless of the future, we should not expect to see 17.2, the final release until some point in early December. And I did also want to mention that a new AirPods Pro 2 firmware update was just released today as well. So this update is version 6B32. So the Apple just says that this fixes bugs and other improvements. They don't really give any details as to what has been addressed with this update, but I would not expect anything too major. Now you can go into your AirPod settings and then go all the way down to the bottom and you will see your current version. As you can see, I am not currently updated as it was just released, but you can go into here and if your device says 6B32, that means your AirPods Pro 2 are updated. And again, this is just for the AirPods Pro 2, no other AirPods. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 17.2 beta two. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on Apple Weekly on Saturday, along with other iOS 17 videos in the near future. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.